Hey guys, it's Krista Watson here from Krista Quilts, and on this week's video, I'm going to show how to make streamers, which is one of my free quilt patterns. Now, during this video, I'm going to focus mainly on the machine quilting, but I'll throw in a few other bonus tips and tricks. Fabric selection is really easy for this quilt. All you need are some colorful squares and three yards of contrasting background. I'm using my Dazzle Dots fabric from Benertex, but you can use any fabrics you choose. If you want to start off with the 10 inch squares, all you need to do is one pack and cut those up into individual five inch squares. Or you can grab four charm packs that are standard size, which is usually 40 to 42 pieces, and that will be enough. So far, I've made one version of this quilt using bright pink background, but look how fun it would be in other colors. You can try turquoise or navy or dark or light gray. I do have kits for a limited time, or you can just grab something from your stash. So following the free pattern directions, you're going to start off with a whole bunch of smaller background squares. You're going to place both of these on opposite ends of your 5 inch squares and then you're going to sew from corner to corner along both sides. Make sure you check out the pattern for really good diagrams. Now what I'm doing right now is a little bonus trick. I'm taking those corner triangles and you're gonna cut the rest of those off. However, I have sewn a half an inch away from the main seam so that once I cut off the little triangle tips, I have a whole bunch of leftover half square triangles. I can throw these in my stash or I can use them to make a little mini quilt or other fun scrappy project. You can cut off these bonus triangles with a little pair of scissors like I just showed you, or here's a faster way to do it. What I really like to do is I like to take a whole bunch of those squares after they've sewn, and then I'm gonna assembly line trim. I'm using my Krista Quilts rotary cutter along with my mini mat and ruler set to trim off those bonus triangles. I can do it right there at my sewing machine and it goes very quickly. So each one of these pieced units that you'll make will represent one block in your quilt. Although the quilt is written for one size, there's nothing that says you can't make it bigger. Just make more squares. Here's another bonus tip. When you're piecing these units together, sew with a shorter stitch length so that your seams are nice and tight, which comes in handy if you want to press your seams open like I do. So here's how I press my seams open with a hot, dry iron. First, I'm going to take my finger and kind of run it along the seam to open it up. Then I come along with my iron, hot and dry, no steam, and I press right on top of it. I'm going to press both seams this way, and then I will flip the whole unit over and press again from the front side. Flat blocks are going to make a flat quilt that's so easy to machine quilt. So you might want to make stacks of blocks right next to your sewing machine and make sure that they are going in opposite directions so you can get that wiggly zigzag pattern. Then I like to assembly line sew or chain piece so that goes quicker. Finally, I'm going to lay out all of my quilt blocks on the design wall so that I'm happy with their arrangement. I'll quilt this with a hot pink thread to match. This is 100% cotton from my Aurifil thread collection. The free pattern includes a very simple wavy line quilting plan along with a coloring page that you can use to plan out your colors or sketch out machine quilting ideas. To get this gorgeous wavy line texture, I'll be quilting with my walking foot or integrated dual feed system. And you'll notice that I'm set up on a very nice large drop-in table called the Krista cabinet from Arrow Sewing. I'm wearing my quilting gloves because those will give me a lot of grip on the quilt and they have little knobbies at the fingers that allow me to push my way underneath the sewing machine. So rather than starting in the middle of the quilt, I've actually started on the right hand edge of the quilt. And rather than quilting all of those lines at one time, I'm doing a process that I call divide and conquer. 
So each of the blocks of my quilt and each of the rows is four and a half inches wide. So I'm quilting a wavy line next to the ditch or on top of the ditch along each of those major seam lines, four and a half inches apart. When I've wiggled my way about halfway across the quilt, I stitch off the end of the quilt, cut thread, and then I'm going to rotate the quilt 180 degrees so that everything that I just quilted is now going to be on my left hand side. And I'm scrunching and smushing the other half of the quilt underneath the machine. So when I pick it up and start over, everything that's underneath the machine now has not been quilted. So I'm going to start at the top of the quilt again, roughly in the center, and quilt those wavy lines. I call this anchor quilting. These lines are about every four and a half inches apart. Now, if my blocks were smaller, let's say they were two inches, my anchor quilting lines would be two inches apart. If my blocks were bigger, let's say 10 inches, my anchor quilting lines would be 10 inches apart. This is the way that I use the seam lines as a guideline on my quilt so that I don't have to do any marking of any kind. Now while you watch me for a moment in real time, I will tell you a little bit more about how I have my sewing machine set up. So first of all, because this is walking foot or dual feed quilting, the feed dogs are pulling the quilt under the machine. I'm just guiding it along. So because there's a little bit of friction and drag on the quilt, I'm increasing my stitch length from the standard of 2.5 all the way up to 3.0. This is going to give me a slightly longer stitch length, which is going to look good and kind of sink into the fabric. Do you notice those little bumpers that are attached to the edge of my sewing table? Those are called Christus quilt blocks and the exact purpose is to keep the quilt from falling off the back or the side of the table. It's, it's not needed if your table is pushed up against a wall, but if any side of your table is exposed, your quilt can fall off. So those guards or bumpers keep it from falling off the table. So notice how when I get to the end of a row of stitching, I cut thread and then I pull the quilt all the way back through the machine. I'm moving the quilt over just a little bit to the next anchor point and then I'm starting at the top of the quilt again. I like to have a little bit of batting and backing sticking out around all four sides of the quilt so I can start stitching in the batting from edge to edge and I don't have to worry about tying off or burying my threads. So whenever possible, I like to stitch lines in one direction from the top of the quilt all the way to the bottom. This is a very systematic way to do it and it ensures that the quilt is not going to get all wonky or out of shape. The next thing that I've done is I've lowered my presser foot pressure all the way to zero. Not all machines have this functionality, but my sewing machine is a Bernina 770 Plus and that's one of my absolute favorite things. Lowering the presser foot pressure allows the quilt to gently go through the machine, not get caught up on the feed dogs of the machine, and it allows for a nice smooth stitch. So I'm going to continue anchor quilting all the way over, moving to the right hand side until I've quilted in between every row. That's going to be my first pass across the quilt. For my second pass across the quilt, now I'm stitching in between each of those major seam lines. I'm quilting another wavy line, and whereas the first two lines were about four and a half inches apart in every seam, now this middle line is somewhere about two inches apart all the way across the quilt. With my camera closer up, you can see a little bit more of the detail of what I'm actually doing. So let me talk to you about how I'm forming the wavy lines. Bottom. I mentioned this that is a very my systematic sewing way to do it is set to just a regular that the straight quilt stitch is not with a long stitch line up. shape. The feed dogs are up and engaged just like regular sewing. So really the quilt is just moving underneath the machine as it would for normal sewing. If I didn't move the quilt, it would just stitch in a straight line. But to form those wavy lines, what I'm doing is I'm wiggling my way across the quilt. You can kind of see what my hands are doing. They are twisting and turning the quilt just a little bit. 
and also notice how much I stop and reposition my hands. I'm only stitching a few inches at a time. When I feel like I'm starting to reach, I stop with the needle in the down position and I move my hands so that I can get a better grip on the next part of the quilt. So once I quilt it all the way from edge to edge with my lines about two inches apart, I'm gonna go in for a third pass across the quilt. So each time I quilt, I'm starting from the right hand side and I'm working my way methodically towards the middle of the quilt, stop and rotate, and then work my way from the middle back over to the right hand side. So right now what you're seeing is you're seeing the third pass across the quilt and now my lines are about one inch apart. So I've already quilted about half of it going from right to left and I already rotated it. You didn't see that. Now I'm showing you going from the center back over to the right hand side. You'll probably notice on these close up shots that you don't see any basting or any pesky pins getting in my way. That's because I use a method of spray basting my quilt together so that there's no pins as I quilt. If you'd like to see a really in-depth video, be sure to check out my other video tutorial showing how I spray baste. I've actually got several tutorials that you can check out. And just like I did before, once I get to the edge of a line of quilting, I'm going to clip it with scissors and then I'm going to pull the quilt all the way through so that I'm starting at the top of the quilt every single time. You can see some of those lines from pass number two and now I'm going in in between every single line and quilting another pass. Now it's really up to you how densely or far apart you want to do your lines. One of the nice things about doing this divide and conquer process is you can decide at any time how dense or loose you want your lines to be. Let's say you think you want to quilt them really close together, but after two or three passes, you might think that you're done. The nice thing is, is you haven't locked yourself in to any specific spacing. Now you can see what it looks like as I'm quilting facing you. You can see that most of the bulk of the quilt is off to my left, and that's where my nice Krista cabinet comes in handy. I've got lots of room. I've got extra bumpers around the table so the quilt is not gonna fall off. And as I methodically work my way, one line at a time, I'm constantly repositioning and shifting the quilt so it flows freely. The biggest reason that people get puckers on their quilts or their stitches don't look good is that the quilt and the friction of the quilt kind of bunches up. But as long as your quilt is completely moving freely under the machine, you're not gonna have any of those issues. You'll notice that I'm actually rotating and moving my hands even more than I'm stitching. I like to do something that I call hills and valleys. So the area right around the needle, I like to keep the quilt as flat as possible. That's the valley. I don't want that to be encumbered and I wanna be able to stitch freely, but I don't need a whole lot of room for that valley area, maybe only a few inches. Then everything outside of the immediate area that I'm stitching, that can kind of bunch up as needed and that's called the hills. So make that area in front of your hands and around your hands nice and flat and then the rest of the bulk can kind of bunch up around you as needed. So far, I've shown you everything in real speed so you can see how fast or slow I actually go. And again, just like I mentioned before, when I get to the middle of the quilt, I stop and I rotate and I push half of the quilt underneath the machine. In a very methodical way, you can stitch one line at a time without getting overwhelmed. Now one other thing I want to mention is that I actually stitch pretty quickly. When I'm doing a wavy line, it doesn't have to be very precise, so I can go really fast pedal to the metal. If you want to do more precise line placement or you want to be a little bit more particular with your stitches, you can slow down. That's completely up to you. Now I'll speed up the video just a little bit so you can kind of see me quilting line by line, stitch by stitch. For a simple design like this, it doesn't actually take very long. And here's another tip. If you're not sure how long it's going to take you to quilt the quilt, time yourself when you quilt one line 
or when you make one pass across the quilt, and then you can decide how many additional lines or passes of quilting you want to do. If you want to get something done really quick, this wavy line design is really the way to go because it's probably the quickest, easiest design that I like to quilt. one more shot of me quilting. I just wanted to get a little bit further away so that you could actually see most of the table. And again, now you can see those quilt bumpers, the quilt blocks, holding up that quilt as I'm quilting so it doesn't get in the way. And now here's a close up of me quilting those wavy lines again in real time. This is my last pass across the quilt, and I've done the exact same thing across the whole quilt. Starting from the right, quilting a wavy line from top to bottom, rotating the quilt when I get to the middle and working my way back over to the other side. So I'm actually doing the first half of the last pass of quilting. Again, you get to decide how close or dense you want your lines to be. Now one thing you might be wondering about is what do you do if you break a needle or if you run out of thread? Well, the nice thing about quilting a line of quilting from top to bottom is that if your bobbin starts to get low, you can just stop when you get to the end of the quilt and then check your bobbin. I recommend replacing it as soon as your bobbin gets low. Don't wait until it runs out. But if you do run out of thread or break a needle, what I like to do is you can back up maybe about a half an inch before you run out of thread, pull the bobbin thread up to the top, and then stitch a series of six to eight teeny tiny stitches on top of your previous line of stitching. Then just keep on going. It's not gonna be that noticeable, especially when quilting a dense design on busy fabrics like I have. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this video with me showing you one of the easiest and fastest designs that you can do on your quilt. In real time, it took me less than four hours to quilt this quilt from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what you make. Be sure to check the description box for links to everything I mentioned, kits, supplies, and the free pattern. Until next time, happy quilting. <music>